Hey guys, so before we get this video started, I just want to let you guys know I did see a comment in the last one that said to use some different rosters. And I, at that point, I didn't know about, well, I did know about the roster vault, but I I never uh, downloaded any custom rosters. I've always just used the live rosters. So, uh, and it said that there were no real prospects available in the live rosters. And I, I've seen a lot of comments around the internet, not just on my own comment section, but mainly around the internet. And they've said that the, the OSFM rosters are the best to use. So, and I haven't seen a timeline on when those rosters are going to be out. So for the purposes of this series, we're going to continue using the live rosters. So for the next series, the next MLB GM mode that we start, we will use whatever are the best rosters to use at the time of whenever that starts. But for right now, we are going to continue using the live rosters. So hopefully that's not too big of a problem. And let's get to it. Hey guys, we are back with some more Arizona Diamondbacks franchise mode in MLB The Show 19. Now there is a couple of things that I want to do before we get into the simulation. And the first thing would be to sort out our 40-man roster a little bit. As we do have 40 men on the roster currently, but uh, some of them don't belong there. Troy Scribner is one of them. 54 overall, 27 years of age. We're not going to need him. So, uh, and, and there's other players who I want to put on the 40-man roster. And of course, in order to get more players onto the 40-man roster, we have to take some off. So, we are going to be removing this guy from the 40-man roster. We are also going to be putting this guy Jimmy Scherfe on the forty uh, off the forty man roster as he's a fifty three overall twenty seven years of age. Not great, so we're gonna remove him. And who we'll be putting on the forty man roster to replace is first of all Rick McAllister. He's a first baseman and he's our best first baseman. Now, I don't think he'll be playing first, as we do have a couple of guys who can play all around. I think Eduardo Escobar is going to be at first. But Rick McAllister would make a really nice pinch hitter, or, or just bench player in general. So we are going to add him to the 40-man roster and call him up to the MLB. Now, the next guy who I want to add is this guy, Russ Ayers. He appears to be one of our top prospects. He only has a beef potential. But he's 19 years of age at 74 overall. He's pretty much MLB ready, I would say, at this point. But I do want to see how he simulates in AAA before we call him up. But that being said, I will add him to the 40-man roster. As I am pretty confident that he will, at some point this year, be up in the MLB. Or at the very least, next year. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get... A couple of new scouts. Well, actually, we're going to be holding on to Adrian Benitez. Decided that the scouts for the Central Region, they have some weaknesses that I don't really like. And compared to Benitez, Benitez is at least capable of scouting pitchers and position players compared to, let's say, Jared Johnson, who is, is capable of efficiency, pitchers and position players, but he doesn't have discovery. And Thomas Ayers, who has discovery, Efficiency and pitchers, but he doesn't have position players. So for right now, we're going to keep Adrian Benitez. But we are going to be replacing Claude Ivey with Jose Wells. His efficiency is at 73 compared to Claude Ivey's 26. Discovery is at 70. And then pitchers at 93. And position players, the only thing weaker than Ivey at a 76 to an 83. So we'll be firing Ivy and hiring jo Jose Wells. So there you go. Uh, scouting team is set. Our roster, 40-man roster at least, is set. As for lineups, I did set them after the previous recording. So currently, these are our lineups. We'll start with right-handed pitching DH first. Cattell Marte, Adam Jones, David Peralta, Jake Lamb, Wilmer Flores, Eduardo Escobar, Steven Souza Jr., Alex Avila, and Nick Ahmed. And on the bench, well, the, the bench is pretty big right now as <laughs> we have uh, the 40-man roster up here. But once uh, once spring training is over, 
the majority of these guys will be sent back down to AAA or wherever else they belong. Now, right-handed pitching, no DH. Marte, Escobar, it's basically the same besides Granke or, or the pitch, whoever the pitcher is for that game. And then left-handed pitching, DH, Cattell Marte, Adam Jones, David Peralta, Wilmer Flores, Eduardo Escobar, Steven Seuss Jr., Nick Ahmed, Jake Lamb, and Alex Avila. And, again, pretty much the same thing except with the pitcher inserted and the DH not in there. Uh, so the idea behind these lineups is that Marte starts out with the speed. He's got that 75 for speed. Also got some contact. He's got vision, so he could start out and maybe get us on base. So Adam Jones is second. He's got that 76 for contact versus righties and an 80 for vision, so I figured he'd be a pretty good second hitter. And then you got David Peralta, your best all-around hitter. He's got 89 for contact versus righties, 69 for vision, and then that 65 for speed could help him out at some point as well. And then he's got clutch 77, so he could be a pretty good... I mean, obviously, he's our best position player. 87 overall, and it's not even close for the next guy, I believe, is an 81 in Eduardo Escobar. And then Jake Lamb, he's got some 70 contact versus righty, 76 power, so I would say he's our purest power hitter versus righties. If you take a look at everyone else, I mean, yeah, it's just not really there. So Jake Lamb is in the four hole. Wimber Flores in there at number five. Second base, he's got that 65 for contact versus right. He's 59 power, 86 vision, so that's why he's in there at number five. Eduardo Escobar, uh, 64 contact, 60 for power, 67 vision, pretty well-rounded. And then Steven Souza Jr., 51 contact, 68 power, 69 speed, 33 vision, so that's why he's down there at the bottom of the line, near the bottom of the lineup. Alex Avila, 46 contact. 64 power, 19 vision. It only gets worse from there. And then Nick Ahmed, 41 contact, 44 power. He's got the vision, but the contact and power down there in the 40s. And then the same thing goes pretty much for left-handed pitching. You got Cattell Marte leading off, Adam Jones, uh, David Peralta. Again, pretty much our best all-around hitter. Wilmer Flores in the uh, cleanup spot for Versus left-handed pitching because he's got that 75 contact, 73 power, 86 vision. And Eduardo Escobar will be hitting number 5. Steven Souza Jr. at 6. Nick Ahmed, number 7. And at 8, we have Jake Lamb. And then Alex Avila at number 9. And again, pretty much all the same things for no DH except with the pitcher in there. Actually, we may as well take a look at the pitching rotation. You have Granke. And Robbie Ray, uh, then after that it drops off, Zach Godley, Luke Weaver, Matt Koch, and then all these relief pitchers here. Uh, we have quite a bit just because of the 40-man roster. Some of them will be sent back to triple or double A at the end of spring training. So now with all that out of the way, we can finally start the sim for spring training. Our division rivals are the San Francisco Giants, the San Diego Padres, the LA Dodgers, and the Colorado Rockies. So let's get things underway. And EA, look how fast this is. Look. I, I'm not even going to edit all this out because it's just, it's so fast. I can talk over it. I don't, I don't have to, you know, ramble, waiting for the simulation to finish. Boom. Already done. That was just me hitting triangle too. That I didn't even, you know, I didn't, uh advanced to regular season or, or sim to date. I sim day by day there, and it's already done. So we went 14 and 14 in the preseason, or, uh, well, spring training, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's called spring training in baseball, so we'll try to stick to that lingo, but I would not be surprised if it slips out as preseason, <laughs> just given uh, hockey and all that. So we're going to take a look at the statistics for the preseason, see who did what. And uh, see who should be on our starting lineup. Abraham Almonte with 23 at bats, 10 hits, 4 runs, and a 435 average. That is definitely not going to stay consistent. <laughs> and he's probably going back to, I would say, at least AAA. Because, uh, yeah, I, I, 
there's no way that's sustainable. <laughs> uh, now, Rick McAllister, 321 batting average in 28 at bats. Now, just given his contact and vision and discipline and clutch, that's a little bit more realistic than Abraham Almonte. <laughs> so, I wouldn't be surprised if Rick McAllister, uh, don't let that overall fool you. I wouldn't be surprised if Rick McAllister could throw together a decent season here as a 65 overall. Ildemaro Vargas, 310 uh, average rate, or average rating, jeez. Uh, <laughs> batting average, I'm so used to Eastside Hockey Manager. Whenever I see average, I just think average rating. So uh, he's got that vision up there. So I wouldn't be surprised maybe to see him hit 270 throughout the season if he's up here. But I think we have better guys than him. Carson Kelly, he was only up for 14 at-bats. Steven Souza Jr., 68 at-bats, 279. So he was definitely swinging the bat and hitting the ball. Because <laughs> that's generally how you do it. Uh, Adam Jones, 36 at bats, 278. Matt Scherzer, I'm just going to guess that's how it's pronounced. And then David Peralta, 77 at bats, 273 average rating. Oh my God, I did it again. <laughs> Batting average, we're in, we're in baseball here, Jason, not hockey. Oh my goodness. That might be tough. That, <laughs> that might be tough. I've already done it twice. Yeah, in, a, in the course of like one minute. Cattell Marte. 265 batting average. <laughs> Wilma Flores, 256. Uh, Eduardo Escobar with a 253. Kelby Tomlinson with a 250 in 28 at bats in 28 games. So one at bat per game. I'm guessing he was maybe a pinch hitter or something. Nick Ahmed, 90 at bats, 244. All right, we're not going to go too deep into it. So Granky with 34 strikeouts, one. ERA whip of .69 in, uh, I'm going to guess, five games. Because he has five wins and no losses. So that is pretty good for him. 36 in innings pitched. Uh, 18 games, actually. He had six starts and five wins. But he played 18 games. Okay. Not sure how that works. Maybe one of you guys can explain that. But, sure. Uh, Robbie Ray. With 42 strikeouts, ERA, 1.41. If this all can hold up, Robbie Ray and Zach Granke might end up carrying us to the playoffs. But I'm not expecting that to hold up. So Vino Bracho with a 3.18 ERA and a .71 whip. Matt Koch with a 6.12 ERA. Archie Bradley with a .77 ERA. 1.29 whip. And how many saves did he have? He had 10 saves. And how many games played? 13. That's pretty impressive. How many blown saves? How many blown saves? Only one. Archie Bradley looks pretty good. He's already an 83 overall as well. I would have to guess that's from morale. Yeah, that's from morale mainly. But still, he is looking pretty good. So, yeah, we're not going to, as I said, not going to get too deep into this. As it is only a spring training. But we will advance to the regular season right now. And we have our first series against the LA Dodgers. Before we get started in the simulation, we are going to set our scouts. So all these prospects here, they are blue chip prospects. We already have them completely uncovered. So as we take a look, Jack Bledsoe, closing pitcher. His 80 potential means he is elite. That is the highest potential you can have in this game, uh, at least when it comes to uh, the uh, scouting process. And then his overall is at 55, meaning he's in between average and above average. Or we could take a look at someone who is more MLB ready, such as Willard, Ruther, bleh, Willard Rutherford. <laughs> Left fielder, potentially a replacement for David Peralta, if we could get our hands on him in the draft. Overall is at 65, meaning he's at... Uh, in between above average and well above average, and he is at 80 potential, meaning he is elite, uh, or should be elite. So uh, those are blue chip prospects, and then down here are the prospects that, well actually we appear to have a lot, a lot of blue chip prospects here, at least compared to usual, so we, as we sort to see all these guys, it looks like a, a whole round of 
of uh, blue chip prospects here. So we're pretty much guaranteed to get our hands on at least one of these guys. So we're going to sort by potential here, and we will just scout uh, whatever guys have an 80 potential, and then we'll see their true potential once they are fully scouted. So this guy's international, Daniel Saito, is a first baseman. We definitely need, <laughs> we definitely need first baseman. Natural first baseman, anyway. So we are going to send Huber out to scout Saito. And then there's a central guy right there, Daniel Bartley, who's a catcher. Uh, so we will send Adrian Benitez out to scout him. And as for the east, there's Scott Hadley. He's only a 75 potential, but all the 80 potential guys are blue chip prospects, or at least appear to be. And then there's a starting pitcher there in Reynaldo Costa. So I guess he'll be our next international scouting trip. Since he's the only other 80 overall, or 80 potential that we don't have scouted. So with Billy Cannon, we will scout Scott Hadley. And with Jose Wells, we will scout Dwayne Hotto. He's 22 years of age already, but he's got that 75 potential. He's in the West, so we'll see what he's all about. Alright, so with that all done, we will finally move on to the start of the regular season. So sim through date. So here the scouts are going to uncover players who are in these regions. So Billy Cannon currently working on the East for infielders. Um, and uh, Adrian Benitez currently working in the West for some reason. So I'm going to switch that up because he's a central scout. And we'll just let him look for whatever else he wants. So there you go. Central. And this guy got to go international. We'll let the scouts do their thing. We'll let them uncover players for about a week or two. Then we'll check up on them. So first game of the entire GM mode here against the LA Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw. Granky versus Kershaw. Let's see. That is going to be a 4-3 to three loss. And let's see. Box score. Unbelievable. <laughs> McAllister had five at-bats and no hits. Peralta had a hit. Flores had two hits, Jones had two hits, and we lose four to three. But in baseball, we have series instead of uh, just one-off games. So uh, we still have three more games against the LA Dodgers to get a couple wins here. So here we go, game number two: Robbie Gray versus Walker Bueller, and that's going to be a eleven to seven loss. My goodness! So McAllister with a hit. Peralta with three hits, Lamb with three hits, Jones, Flores, and Escobar with two hits, Avila and LaCastro with one hit each. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to go through that every time. That's going to take way too much time. But, yeah, we're, we're not looking too good to start out the season. Game number three against the LA Dodgers, and that is going to be a four to one loss. Yeah. So we already lost the series, last game of the series. And that's going to be an 8-1 loss against the LA Dodgers. Starting out rough. <laughs> and we are currently 4th in the West for the National League. So, And we're 4 games behind uh, LA and San Diego. So not a really not a good way to start out the season. And of course, now, after facing LA, we have San Diego. So uh, I'd imagine at least 2 out of 3 of these would be losses. Let's see. Yep, loss, win. Loss, and I predicted right. So we got one win there. Let's see our first win of the season. Uh, Marte, no hits. Jones with a hit. Peralta with three hits and two RBIs. Uh, Lamb with a hit. Flores with a hit as well. And did anyone have a home run? Yes, Lamb had a home run. Peralta had a double and a triple. There's our first one of the season, but we are unfortunately one and six to start out. <laughs> so that's rough. So here we go, scouting. So now that all these guys have been uncovered, yeah, this is more like it. So notice how many more prospects there are with the 80 potential. Th these guys weren't even visible to us before. And now we, that we have them all uncovered, we can officially start uh, to scout. So Billy Cannon for the East, we will send him out for Rory Ashton. He looks, if that's true, 
If he has an 80 overall and 80 potential, that is insane. We're going to want to get him scouted, especially if we have a high draft pick. I have no idea where we're picking just yet, so we'll see what happens in the draft. And the draft in the MLB is in the middle of the season. It's not like NHL where it's uh, in the offseason. No, we're, we're talking, I think, June or July. So that's like a couple months in. So Central, Adrian Benitez, Art Aguirre, Matthew Bowden, Scott Hurd, Gabriel Pereira, Ross Rosario, and Matt Schuller. Well, he's not in the Central. So we'll stick to one of these guys. We'll go for one of the 60 overalls. We'll go Matthew Bowden. Yeah, international. You have Garth Rosado. If that's if those are his true numbers, which they're probably not, but if they are, then that's that's pretty good. Uh, there's Calvin Lair here with that 75 overall. I'm definitely gonna want him to scout him next for the central. Actually, you know what? I might just want to scout him now. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see what he's about. Uh, and then international, sure. Pedro Santana for the West will scout Matt Schuler as he's got that 80 overall, 80 potential. So, we'll see what all these guys are about. Within a few scouting trips, let's go the series against Boston. Let's see what happens. There's a win. There's a win. All right. Aces, AAA injury. Jake Grado. And he will be out for a few days. We'll keep him active. Uh, another injury. Two, three months. He's 60-day IR. Uh, valid pit pitching rotation. Auto fix. So, uh, start out three and seven. Got two wins against Boston, which is pretty good. They're seven and four to start out the season. As we go into the roster, uh, acquisitions, contracts, coach contract. Yeah, we've seen this already. We'll go back into scouting here and make sure all of our guys are being scouted. So for the East, before we were scouting Roy Ashton. He's now got that 70 potential at 65 overall. I'll keep scouting him just in case because it says he's got 2022 MLB ETA. So we'll keep scouting him just to make sure. Uh, and then Central, you have Ricky Carlisle, who 75 potential, 50 overall. Where's the guys who we were scouting before? Was it Santana? I know he was one of the international guys who we were scouting. Uh, who's the Central guy we were scouting? Was it Lair? Yeah, it was Lair. So we'll keep scouting him. Uh, international, we'll keep scouting Santana. And Jose Wells for the West, we will scout... It was one of these guys. It was Schuler, Right. So we'll keep scouting those guys. Two-game series against Texas. 2-1 win for Zach Greinke. And a 6-3 win for Matt Andres. Okay. So you know, we'll take a look at this one. Looks like an interesting game. McAllister with two hits. And Marte with a hit. Peralta with a hit. Lamb with two. Flores, Escobar also with two. Uh, Avila and Ray with hits as well. And no home runs, but Lamb had... Uh, double and McAllister with two RBIs. Not too bad of a series there against Texas, especially pulling out two wins. We are now five and seven on the season. We'll do this series against San Diego and then we'll check out on the scouts again. So Jake Rotto is no longer injured, auto utilized in AAA. And there you go. We split the series. All right. So they won three seven, but then we won six nothing, nine to seven, and then four to five in game number four. So we're seven and nine on the season. Uh, transactions, completed transactions. Yeah, yeah, that's just other teams calling up their players, probably due to injuries. Derek Peralta is hot. That's good. Uh, so actually, since we are, what, we're in the middle of April. Okay, at the end of April, we'll check out the stats for the first time. And for scouting, so we're going to come back here quite often just because I, I don't know where we're drafting, and if we have a good pick, then I want to make sure that we have as many players uncovered as possible. I mean, we'll probably just end up, if we have a good pick, we'll probably just end up taking a blue chip prospect, because there's so many of them. Even if we have a late round pick by chance, which is not likely given the, the roster that we have, but if we do have a late round pick, we probably will be able to pick up one of these blue chip prospects. So Rory Ashton is almost uncovered. We have him at 80 potential, 70 overall currently. And he's looking good. Not completely uncovered, but almost there. So we're going to keep scouting him. Uh, as for Central, Calvin Lair, that 75 potential. We'll keep scouting him. International, Pedro Santana. 
he's looking good. He's quite a ways away from the MLB, but he does still have that 80 potential. And then Jose Wells for the West. We will keep scouting Matt Schuler as he still has that 80 potential. So I want to make sure that those four specifically are scouted before draft day. We'll go one more week. Series against Atlanta and Chicago. And that is going to be a loss to Atlanta and a loss to Chicago in terms of the series. We won one game in both series, but we lost the series for both of them. So we are now 9-13 and on the season, six games back of the L.A. Dodgers. Mm, yeah, it's already looking like a rough season. Looking like a rough season ahead. So we'll go back into scouting just to make sure that all these guys are completely scouted. So Pedro Santana has been completely scouted. 75 potential, 55 overall. So he's not, I wouldn't say he's my first choice. Good fielder, good defensive shortstop it looks like. Uh, Rory Ashton has that 80 potential as a shortstop. So I would definitely take him before Pedro Santana as we take a look at him. Oh yeah, that contact's way up there at a 70. Not a power hitter for sure, but everything else is... Pretty much where it needs to be. I'd like his fielding to be a bit better. But, yeah, Rory Ashton. If we can manage to pick him up in maybe the second round, that would be a steal. Now, Matt Schuler is almost done being scouted. And he's still got that 80 potential. So, we're going to keep uh, scouting him for as long as he's got that 80 potential. So, out to the west you go. And for the Central, we'll keep... Well, Calvin Lair, he hasn't maintained that 80 potential. He's now down to 70, and he's almost fully scouted. So I would say... I would say we'll go after maybe a relief pitcher here, Miguel Lima, since he's almost completely uncovered, got that 80 potential. We'll scout him. Uh, international. Kellenberger has an 80 potential. Third base... Let's see who else. Yeah, I mean, we're done with Santana, so I guess we'll scout Kellenberger here. And for the East, let's scout Scott Hadley here. He's got that 80 potential. I want to see what he turns out to be. The series against Pittsburgh. Loss, 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 loss. Yeah. I don't think there's too much I could do lineup-wise to fix this team. It's just kind of a rough lineup. And it looks like the assistant coach has been... Uh, Messing around with the lineups a little bit as well. I guess that's just from the auto-managed lineups. Or the uh, the auto-managed roster. So let's see how Rick McAllister's doing. Uh, yeah, well, you know what? We'll see how everybody is doing at the end of the month. So we'll go a few more games here. Chicago, loss, loss, win. There you go. And uh, final game of the month against the New York Yankees. They're 20-8. and eight. Not expecting a win here. 6-4 loss, okay. So, as you can see with this team, it's pretty rough. We're 11 games back of the LA Dodgers. Again, I don't think there's too many changes that I can make lineup-wise right now that would really improve us too much, if at all. So, we're just going to keep focusing on scouting, and maybe we'll make a trade or two in the next one. But, uh, yeah. For right now, we're just we're looking towards the draft Let's see. I want to get Adam Hirsch scouted. Right fielder, 75 potential. Central. Uh, let's get Lima completely uncovered. Relief pitcher. International. Let's go for a starting pitcher. Why not? Angel Campos. Got that 80 potential. And and for the West, we will continue scouting Duane Hautau. Not 100% sure how to pronounce that name, but that is my best guess. So, just because, again, the the situation we're in, I don't feel like there's any lineup changes I can make. Granky's down to a 91. But before we continue simulating, we'll check out the stats, see how everybody's doing. So, Willow Flores with a 347 in 95 at-bats. That's pretty insane for an 80 overall. He's definitely doing well so far. David Peralta with a 321. Not bad. 
<laughs> Definitely not bad. Tim LaCostro with a 276. Steven Souza Jr. with a 263. Eduardo Escobar, 260. And there you go. Rick McAllister, the 65 overall with a 245. Now, that's not great. It's not terrible, though. So, he's been doing okay for us. For sure, as, as a 65 overall budget player, he's definitely getting the job done. Cattell Marte, 235. Alex Avila, he's cold with a 233. Jake Lamb, 233. Adam Jones, 224. Nick Ahmed, 197. Gerard Dyson, 174. Uh, John Ryan Murphy with a 160. Let's check the... Let's check the field percentage and see how they're doing defensively. So Flores, perfect. Peralta, perfect. LaCastro has a 950. Souza Jr., perfect. Eduardo Escobar, 963. McAllister, 985. Marte with a 938. Avila with a 996. Jake Lamb, 967. Jones, perfect. Ahmed, 987. Dyson, perfect. Murphy, perfect. So wins above the replacement. Wilmer Flores, 1.6. Peralta, 1.3. Avila, 0.9. Ahmed, 0.3. So you're seeing the problem here. <laughs> We're just not a very good team. So most of our players have a negative war. Uh, Adam Jones, 0.1. LaCastro, 0.1. Sousa Jr. and Escobar are even. Everyone else is negative with at least a minus 0.1. And then McAllister actually has a point, minus 0.5. Let's see home runs. Let's see who has the most. Wilmer Flores with eight so far in 29 games. Not too bad. Let's see pitchers. So ERA. Who has the lowest? It's, of course, Zach Greinke with a 1.85 ERA, 1.03 whip. 42 strikeouts so far. And he has two wins. Uh, let's see blown saves for uh, relief pitchers. Shop in with two. Uh, Bradley, Andres, and I saw a comment about this on the pronunciation of this name. Repshinsky, I think, is how it's pronounced, is what I saw. As far as saves go, Archie Bradley has seven, and Schaffin has one, and everyone else with nothing. So there you go. There's the stats for the first couple of months. Let's go through May as well. We'll go up to the draft in this one. So, uh... And again, because we're not a just not a good team, the really the only thing we're going to be focusing on is drafting well. So there you go. Solid win against the Yankees. Uh, out for a few days, we'll keep active. Uh, win against Colorado. Uh, Timmy Byers. Out for a few days, we'll keep active. And two losses in a row against Colorado. 12-22 and 22 currently on the season. Uh, yeah, we'll just get that out of the way. Uh, scouting. Let's see, yeah, we're gonna, again, we're going to be coming back here a lot. We are going to be coming back here a lot. So for the East, I just want to make sure all these guys are scouted. Ashton, Hirsch. All right, so I went through that by myself. Figured we're scouting mostly the same players over and over. May as well spare you guys the time. So we'll do the series against Tampa. Alonzo Fernandez, or Alfonso <laughs> Fernandez, no longer injured, auto-utilized. That's double A. Uh, Timmy Byers. Triple A auto utilize. Uh, yeah, all these injuries. To, uh, what are the uh, injury sliders at? Hold on, let's let's see this. I usually like to have the injury slider down. Where am I going here? Uh, down to the second. Oh yeah, it's way up there. So we're gonna put it to the lowest setting without uh, being off. So there you go. <laughs> now we'll see a lot less injuries. So that's looking better. Uh, what's not looking good is that we are <laughs> 13 and 25. It's just not happening this season. So we may as well focus on our prospects down here. So one guy who I'm really curious about is Russ Ayers. How's he doing? Uh, and we're going to have to take a look at the statistics page to view his stats because all it shows on that page is the MLB stats. So we'll go to average here. Yeah, Russ Ayers with a 3 43 batting average. He is tearing up AAA. So let me know in the comments, should we bring up Russ Ayers to the MLB or should we let him just tear it up for a full year? Let me know. Uh, Christian Walker with a 333. 
Uh, I don't think he's a prospect. No, he is not. He's 28 years of age. But Russ Ayers, he is looking promising. Layfield, I don't, I'm not sure how many of these guys are actually prospects. Carson Kelly with a 256. Timmy Byers. Yeah, I think that's it for down here. And AAA at least. Oh, wait. Chad Chen. Chad Chen, right. So he's actually going up in overall. That's good. Uh, ERA of 1.13. Well, he's a closing pitcher, so really what matters for him is his saves. He's got zero so far and one win and no blown saves, so I guess that's good. All right, so continuing the series against Atlanta. Let's see. There's a there's a win. All right. Auto Eli's. All these guys coming back from injury. Loss 6-3. to 7 nothing win. So we won that series against Atlanta. Not too shabby. Pittsburgh, they're 20-18 and 18 currently. So we get a win, they get two wins, unfortunate. Series against San Francisco, win, win, loss, okay, we won the series. San Diego, win, win, loss, okay, we're getting better. San Francisco once again, win, win, win. What is going on here in Arizona? We are all of a sudden turning a corner a little bit. Series against Colorado, uh, hello, uh, Ken Giles. Goes from the Blue Jays to the Rangers. And a win against Colorado. Win. Loss. Win. Loss. Okay, so we uh, we had a pretty solid end to the month there. Very solid end to the month. And I would have to guess that's because of our pitching. Uh, yeah, Granke, Ray, and Godley are all on fire. So, because, <laughs> yeah, if we're, if we're getting anything done, it's because of our pitching. Well, actually... Half of our lineup appears to be on fire as well. Rick McAllister with a 281 average. Uh, batting average. I almost said average rating again. <laughs> but Cattell Marte on fire. Jake Lamb. Wilmer Flores. So, uh, yeah. I mean, that's. I guess that's what happens when guys are on fire. You start winning. But uh, we'll take a look at the scouts here. Uh, just to make sure they're doing their job. Carlos Sandoval on a little, uh, uncovered a little bit. Central. Yeah, sure. So the draft is in a couple of days. I sent out the scout so that we have everything uncovered, or everything possible uncovered. So let's get to the draft now. It's in three days. There's a loss against the Mets. Loss against the Dodgers. Win against the Dodgers. David Peralta no longer injured. He was out for a few days. And we will go to the first year player draft for 2019. Let's go. So the Orioles have the first pick. Where are we picking? Where are we picking? Oh my, we're picking 16th for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Okay. So let's see what happens. So, oh my. D did you guys just see that name? Did you guys just see that name? Jason Hutchinson is in MLB now. Let's go. I mean, he's not on our team, obviously. He's on the Baltimore Orioles, but that's uh, that's pretty cool to see. We had Jason Hutchinson first in uh, New York. He was our goaltender for a while there, and <laughs> now he's playing third base for the Baltimore Orioles, or he will be at some point. So that's pretty cool to see. Now... Our pick. Still a few blue chip prospects available. Still a lot of <laughs> blue chip prospects available, actually. So we have Carlton Patton. Low plate discipline, low plate vision. All around hitter. He's got more power than contact, but mm, I'd keep looking. Alan McDonald's pitcher. I'd rather take a positional player, to be honest, if we can. Julio Franco, starting pitcher, closing pitcher, Travis Corona, Patrick Tripp. He's got power, mm, average plate discipline and plate vision, though. He's a right fielder. Mm, wish he was better defensively. Andres Navarre, starting pitcher, Thomas Leal. Willard Rutherford, so this guy's still available. We saw him earlier when we were taking a look. 
and he might be the pick because he his MLB ETA is 2020. He might be the pick, and we can replace him with David Peralta if needed, or we could put him in the let's say in right field or in center field even, and get more depth there. So that's definitely an option. Robert Dip- Dickerson, uh, he's going to take the 2023 plus. So I'd rather take Rutherford, uh, Cameron. Eh, I like Rutherford a lot better. Derek Laughlin, he looks good. And he's, his ETA is 2022, but I would still rather take Rutherford for sure. Uh, Steve Urbina, eh. And Manny Tavares. Nah. Yeah, I think the pick is Willard Rutherford here. Unless there's someone else. I mean, there's Matt Schuler, He's a center field. And he's pretty well-rounded. And you compare him to Rutherford. Rutherford's more of a power hitter. It looks like... It looks like Rutherford has slightly more plate discipline. Or plate vision. And I think slightly more contact as well. Or they are they even? Yeah, they're e- actually even in terms of potential. But as far as power, I think Rutherford has slightly more, yeah. Rory Ashton as well, shortstop. We have a lot of good prospects to select from here, but I think Willard Rutherford has to be first on my list here. So welcome to Arizona Willard. Rutherford. Now, let's hope none of our guys get taken. And I just saw Rory Ashton's name. I think I might have saw a couple others as well. So, let's see. Pick player. Still got Adam Hirsch. He's going to take a while to get there. But he's still got that 80 potential. If nothing else, we could use him as trade bait. So, sure. Adam Hirsch, welcome to Arizona. And we're... Picking in the compensatory round. So there's a 75 here. Pedro Santana. Now 75 potential isn't that bad either. That's between well above average and elite. So that's... Yeah. That's a pretty good player. Fielding. Great fielder. Uh, great defensive shortstop here is Pedro Santana. So as far as the best option here... We gotta go with Pedro Santana. Because he's the only one that's fully scouted... And I'm sure there's some other 80 potentials available, but I'd rather play it safe for right now. We'll get the shortstop, Pedro Santana. Welcome to uh, Arizona. Yeah, another compensatory round, I believe. So, De Jesus, uh, Hato. I might want to choose this guy just to get a pitcher on board. He's 22 years of age. He's almost fully scouted. He's got that 70 potential. So that's well above average. So he's going to end up being a pretty good pitcher, it looks like. He's got that K's over 9 at 65. Hits over 9 at 55. None of his important stats are lower than 55 in terms of his his, uh, his potential. So sure, Dwayne Hato. Round number three. So Jackie Perry. Uh, 70 potential. MLB ETA 2023 plus contact 65 each. So more of a contact hitter. Play discipline 60. Play dis, uh, play vision 60. Fielding 65. All around a pretty solid player. And there's not really too many other better options at this point. At least in terms of what we have for the most part scouted. So Jackie Perry. Uh, and we, we can always, I know he's a left fielder. And we already got that other guy. But uh, we could always try to move him to left field, or, or uh, we could always try to move him to center field or right field, or even an infield position. Sometimes they're capable of doing that. So I really like Christopher Cortez here for our next pick, as he's got that 80 for arm strength as a third baseman, which you really need. Uh, 75 for arm accuracy, good contact hitter, 60 for plate vision. And just all around, looks like he could be a pretty solid player if this is accurate. So we'll be choosing Christopher Cortez for our fourth round pick. Uh, Fifth round pick. So at this point, there's no one who we really have completely uncovered or even half uncovered that is of interest. So we'll just go for the 80 potential. Or you know what we can do? 
what we can try is we'll sort by MLB ETA, and then we'll just take anyone who goes in 2020 or 2021. So this is completely un inaccurate, but L William L Lazari, if that's accurate, which I, which it probably isn't, but if it is, that's a good player. Uh, Rich Rosario, who we have a little bit more uncovered, who's a starting pitcher, he's going to take till 2022. Yeah, we could go for him. He's 18 years of age as a starting pitcher. We need a little bit of everything here, so I'm thinking, yeah. Wait, who was it? Was it Rich Rosario? Or? <laughs> There's two Rosarios, and they're both starting pitchers. I think it was, yeah, it was Rich Rosario because he's got that 2022, so... Uh, there we go, Rich Rosario. Welcome to Arizona. Now let's take a relief pitcher, Rafael Cabrera. MLB ETA is supposedly 2020, and he's supposedly get that 80 overall already, but we don't know for sure until we see him. And there you go. There is the draft. So now we will see the true potential and true overall of our draft picks. Let's see. So, Willard Rutherford, 98 potential. Let's go. He is a 70 overall currently. Look at that arm strength. Look at that reaction. This guy is going to be fantastic if he, we develop him the correct way. Willard Rutherford, let's go. Adam Hirsch, 86 potential. Only 49 overall, though, so he's got a ways to go. He's 21 years of age as well. So, will he make it? Maybe, just because he's got that B potential and he's young somewhat, but he's already 21 as compared to Rutherford 19. <laughs> so we'll see how he turns out. I'm hoping for the best, but if nothing else, he's trade bait. Uh, Pedro Santana, 56 overall with that 85 potential. Good fielding already, good reaction. Uh, he could be something. Could be something. Dwayne Hotto with an 80 potential. Currently 59 overall. Yeah, he's obviously got some work to do, but hopefully he'll get there. Jackie Perry with a 73 potential, 52 overall. You never know. He could end up being a good depth player. Uh, Christopher Cortez, good speed, good arm strength and arm accuracy. That was that third baseman that we picked up. 76 potential. Rich Rosario, we got lucky. Rich Rosario. The 18-year-old starting pitcher, 91 potential. He's 66 overall. Looks like we got ourselves a gem here. And where did we take him? Did we take him with, like, the fifth round pick, I think? Because, and then you got Cabrera, 67 relief pitcher. But, but he's a 73 overall. So, <laughs> he's actually, a, he's a higher overall than he has potential. So he could be he'd be more useful now than he will be in the future, which is a bit odd. But we'll get to signing all these guys now. Willard Rutherford definitely got to get you on the team. We'll get all these guys on the team, really. I mean, we need as many prospects as we can get. Uh, Jackie Perry. I mean, I I'm not sure how he's going to turn out, to be honest. Uh, same thing with Christopher Cortez, but Christopher Cortez does have a notable strength, and that is his arm accuracy and arm strength and speed. So he might turn out to be something. I'm not sure about Perry. Uh, Rich Rosario, we definitely want to sign. And we'll even sign Cabrera because he's, he's already a 73 overall. He may end up helping out our AAA squad. Can't wait for Rutherford, man. Oh, my goodness. He looks so good. <laughs> All right, so now that that's out of the way, I think we're going to end things off here. It's already been quite the eventful episode, so I'll leave it off here. Let me know what you guys think of our draft picks, of, uh, of Willard Rosario, or uh, not Rosario, well, yeah, of Rosario, but that's not his name. That Willard Rutherford, and uh, what was the Rosario guy's first name? Rich, and Rich Rosario. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one when we continue year number one.